A documentary can be defined as a non-fiction film or series designed to teach an audience about certain realities. Documentary films are like the cool teacher, who panders their curriculum in a way that every student can find interest. While a boring teacher will simply lecture students without acknowledging their low level of interest, a cool teacher uses creative and unconventional methods to educate their class on particular subjects. These methods entertain the class, or the audience, while simultaneously teaching them new things. Sure, you can learn a lot from reading a book or browsing the internet, but documentaries create an actual experience for the audience to engage in and to be enlightened by its information. And like the cool teacher, documentaries are informative, credible, stylized, and include takeaways for their audience. To illustrate this definition, we're going to discuss two example films, the first being 20 Feet from Stardom. The 2013 music doc explores the lives beyond the unknown and underappreciated backup singers over the years in musical history. The informative content of this film touches on multiple aspects of backup singers, including their humble beginnings. Darlene Love is the one that's the cause of all of this. Darlene Love and Fanita James Blossoms, they were the first black background singers. How they were heavily influenced by the church. My father was a minister. My father was a preacher. My father was a pastor's daughter. Isn't that cliche? <laughs> That's how I was actually introduced to music. How their record producer screwed them over. First of all, he changed my name from Darlene Wright to Darlene Love. And my first record was supposed to be He's Sure the Boy I Love. So we go into the studio. I'm signed with him now. Everything is legal. We record He's Sure the Boy I Love. And I'm tootling down the street a couple of months later, and I hear the disc jockey say, well, the new record by the Crystals. And I'm going, Crystals? What did he do, fly them in? And he didn't tell us. No, it was my voice on He Sure the Boy I Love, so I was really pissed. And how rock and roll changed everything for them. Everybody was telling us we had to bring everything down. So when the rock and roll world came and said, no, we want you to sing, it saved us. It saved us. It saved our lives. There's also dozens of stories about key backup singers and how strongly they impacted the industry. 20 Feet from Stardom establishes its credibility by featuring actual backup singers who discuss their past experiences with the audience. The film also features many famous musicians such as Stevie Wonder, Sting, Bruce Springsteen, and Mick Jagger who also express their fortune of working with these other talented vocalists. The stylized editing in this film creatively uses archive footage and music to set the tone for the narrative and give the audience a sense of what it is like to be in their shoes. Notice how they edit Darlene's interview to match the breaks in Ray Charles' song. I knew the whole spectrum of what she was supposed to do as a singer. But I didn't know anything about being an entertainer. Whenever a new musician is brought up, they start the scene with one of their songs. <laughs> Ike Turner, oh my goodness, Ike and Tina Turner. Joe Cocker, even. Once while traveling across the sky. To maintain the lively feel of the musical film, the interviews are crafted to match the beat of the songs. And a teacher's work would not be complete without some messages to take away from the lecture. One objective of documentary is to evoke a certain feeling or perspective for the audience. In the case of 20 Feet from Stardom, the filmmakers wanted the viewers to understand the depreciation of backup vocalists. You know, when you think about the history of pop music and all the memorable hooks that people sing along with, they're singing with us most of the time. How the black community used these talents to overcome their struggles. My way of being an activist in our struggle as black people was to do the music. And how vital they were to the world of music. People didn't want to pay the background singer because they don't think they need it. They were saying, hey, we don't, have to, we don't have to write that check. Not realizing that was the sound. And that's why uh, Joe Cocker and the Stones and Rod Stewart, David and all of these wonderful people, they have their singers there. We need those background singers. Another film example that embodies these characteristics is Food, Inc. This documentary exposes the ugly truth behind the corporate-controlled food industry by reporting an extensive plethora of shocking information to the audience, mostly outlined by raw footage and facts. Other information from Food Inc. includes, but is not limited to, 
the history of the fast food industry, the source of E. coli, the tragic origin of Kevin's Law, and explain the evolution of the meatpacking industry. The authenticity of this information is mostly delivered from its credible subjects such as an investigative reporter, several farmers, the author of a book on the subject, scientists and researchers, and a lower class family affected by the food price regulations. The stylization of Food Inc. uses symbolic graphics and animations to convey the film's messages. Finally, this documentary stresses its main implications throughout the movie. For example, the amount of corporations declining to be involved in the film, and how food processing has negatively affected consumers. They even end the film with texts that advise the viewer on how they can make a change. Through these characteristics, a documentary can successfully open the eyes of their audience. Whether they set out to spread appreciation for long looked over figures in the music world, or spread awareness of an ongoing crisis in America. Being informative, credible, stylized, and offering takeaways for the viewers, documentaries maintain their role as a cool teacher that every student can learn from.